Hi, Molly. Ah, oh, there you are, darling. Oh, a lot. I didn't recognise you with your mask on. All I, that's all I could see before you came on. I've been out with a gun. I've been robbing people on the highway. <laughs> Nobody knows who I am. It's fabulous. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine. I'm taking this off now because I'm on my own now. I'm fine. Oh. Hassled and busy, but as ever. But uh, I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. Have you had any good cases today? Have you seen anybody of interest? Um, yes, all of my patients are interesting, Zisa. Every single yeah, one. They're all adorable and wonderful. Um, I'll tell you what I did have yesterday, a blast from the past. Somebody that we both saw, um, I'm not sure about nine years ago, but certainly seven or eight years ago. Um, and just one of those mad things that happens. I had seen this person's name. Let's call her Susan seen a, a script I'd written for her specifically, she had a specific issue. And I'd got the script out and thought, oh, I wonder how Susan is. Lo and behold, yesterday she contacted me. Yes, yeah, about how her, that happens, isn't it? About her, really her strange. son who needed some, um, some uh, help, which I pushed a, a different way, but out of the blue, seven, eight years, but there you go. And one of the things that she said, which was interesting, was that she still uses some of the hypnotic techniques. I know it's it's no it's fun. I, I often find that you know sort of like you're thinking about somebody and then the yes. phone rings or an email comes or yes. whatever. Incredible. So in terms of COVID, how how is everything going? People are coming in to have hypnotherapy. Well, people, it, it's very interesting. People still want to see, um, well, see my me and my work, my protocol, whatever. Live, they like that. They like that one to one. They like that physical presence. So yes, thankfully, people still are. Of course, we're also doing much more work um, on, on Skype. Skype and FaceTime and, and WhatsApp and all of those. I'm getting quite technical in my old <laughs> age. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's much, much more of that. But people still like the rapport. I think they, li they like to think that they're actually seeing somebody. And, and getting also getting out of the house. I mean, it's oh, so, God, yes. so hard, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. I had, I had the wonderful uh, moment earlier of going up and... and standing outside John Lewis in, and, and thinking, I can't believe this is still all going on. I know, John Lewis I know. is closed. I mean, what's happening in the world, really? Yeah, it's I know. terrible. I know. I know. Well, I've got some questions here, Maureen, if you're oh, ready. Oh, good. Because on, um, next week we're doing a whole week on preparing because obviously yeah. we're in the middle of November now. A lot yeah. of clinics will be closed over mm. Christmas. Mm. And so it's what can you do now, uh, apart from COVID, to sort of help um plan that cycle in january yeah so some of the questions here how well, does how does hypnotherapy help preparing for ivf where does it work and how in the body that's quite a difficult question actually well hypnotherapy helps in in so many different ways i mean it's it's a very it's a very physical um therapy as well it can help to you know lower blood pressure uh, help people to go to sleep easier, l lower um, stress levels on all sorts of levels. It can actually make you feel physically more energized. I mean, hypno hypnotherapy is an extraordinarily vast therapy in respect of its application. It, we use it here quite a lot, though, for people who've maybe developed quite rational rationally with some of the disappointments that people have you know a negative mindset or, or who are finding not even negativity but finding it difficult to to raise that level of optimism again for what can be a little bit like putting your hand in the lion's mouth sometimes when things have not worked out and not gone well for you it's very hard to get back up on the horse as it were and 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 start another cycle or start to try again. I mean, let's face it, let, trying naturally mm. is, is every month is a trial, isn't it? Every so when some, so if somebody's watching this that's never had hypnotherapy before, yeah. and I know that when I first had it, I, I was nervous. I kept thinking, yeah. oh my goodness, you know, about control and yeah. letting go and all of that sort of thing. So what, what do you do? Somebody walks into the room and what happens? I don't have a watch. That's the yeah. first thing I say, yeah, don't yeah. have a watch. I do, it's on my wrist. But anyway, they walk into the room. The first thing for me is to find out what it is people understand about hypnotherapy, hypnosis, whatever. And, and most people, as you quite rightly say, they're nervous. It's, it's not the first therapy you think of when you're going, you know, for any situation. So I have to ameliorate people's feelings. I have to help them feel comfortable and safe. And I have to make them feel that this is... A, a perfectly natural therapy. I think it's got a bad press. No, 
experiences. And I think that's part of the problem is that people come in. With it is because I often say, you know, when I'm mm. consulting, yeah. would you think about, you know, it's mm. always like the, the tie up for me is do, do I send this lady for counselling yes. or hypnotherapy? Yes. And sometimes one will work better than the other yes. by my estimation. Yes, of course. But it, the question that always comes back, oh, I don't, I'm not sure about hypnotherapy. I'm just not yes. sure about it. So, I know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, never mind that it's been around since the Greeks. That's yeah. where hypnosis comes from. But it's been around an awfully long time. But unfortunately, it's been rather hijacked by people who are incredibly wealthy at the moment. But anyway, I won't go into that. But, you know, the fact is that um, people do have these these ideas about them from Hammer House of Horror, from uh, TV shows, from university camp shows. You know, people have used these so-called tricks. The first thing is that I want people to be safe, secure, and I also want them to get a lot out of it. So for me, it's really important to help them understand the process that's going to happen. So when they walk in, I help them to understand that they're not going to be asleep. They're not, they're not going to be, um, that I'm not going to do anything to their minds. They're not going to take control of them. I'm not going to find out any secrets. They are part of this process. I want them to be relaxed. I want them to get the most they can out of the situation. I want them to walk out with strategies, exercises, visualizations, meditations, mantras that they can use when they're on their own. And this is what's really important to me, that when people come, they take something away. It's one of the, the, the best takeaway therapies there is because you do have strategies to use. Yeah, we're, and I know that you work with different, um, yes, with different, different protocols. types of therapies. Yeah. But talk to me about the trance, you know, or yeah. the countdown, or what, what, you know, how it all yeah. starts to. Because okay. I mean, part of this, from uh, you know, my perspective, is, to, is switching from sympathetic mode, which is fight and flight in the nervous yeah. system, to parasympathetic mode, which is allowing yourself to you relax to and yeah. heal and, and and all of that. Well. That's where I think my expertise comes in. Because the, well, first of all, I'm taking the case history. I'm finding out what people need, what they want. And I, rapport. rapport and rapport important. building and all of those. And, and again, making them feel safe. But when I'm counting them down into this trance-like, meditative, prayer-like state, whatever word works best yeah. for you, that is a technique which helps them to physically relax. And that's what people don't really understand, I don't think. But how, having said that, if you've ever done yoga and the last part of yoga, which I never remember the name of, you, you, you're in a yeah. yeah, and you let go because, yeah. you, because you're letting go. Of, and that's what I try to encourage people to do. And my, yeah. my phrase that I will often use is, look, you're here. You've had the, you know, the courage to walk into this. You, you've paid for this therapy. Be a sponge, absorb yeah. it, let it happen to you. Because guess what? There are results. Yeah, yeah. But even even with people who, I mean, this lady I talked about before, um, just before we started that, cynical. And yes, myself, yes. I'll yes. never forget the first time I went for hypnosis. And I was utterly cynical. And I thought, this isn't going to work with me way too strong-minded, million things coming into my head. I, nobody could have been more shocked than me. But, but I was oh, able to you, you, you froze then, sorry. Level. Sorry, Darling, you froze then, frozen. Roy, can, you, can, <laughs> can you hear me now? <laughs> yes, I can, yeah. So, oh, so yeah. nobody was more surpri surprised than me that I could be relaxed. I... I no meditation forget it i couldn't do any of those things it just didn't seem the right sort of therapy for me and here i was relaxing and being stress-free and really being able to walk out of there feeling so different so yes. so so different so different i changed my career that's yeah. how different yeah. i felt i couldn't believe its efficacy and its application and that's what I like to give. I want to give that experience to people so that they actually come away saying, my goodness, I feel different. And that's the Well, thing. I know. I mean, I first came to you. I mean, 
uh, like this month, I think my mother's been dead 20 years. Mm. Mm. And that's when I first came to you thinking, oh, well, I'm going to give this a shot because one of my patients had told me. Yeah. And I was thinking, God, how's hypnotherapy going to help me with grief? But it helped me cope with grief. That's you know, right. It, it helped me cope. Yeah. And that was the, it, that was the important thing. And I don't, you know, like whatever therapy you have, mm -hmm. whether it's good or bad, you always pick something up from it, yeah. don't you? There's always yeah. something you can take away. I've got a few more questions here, Maureen. Um, okay, H how long does it last have you, after you've had a hypnotherapy session? And how often are the sessions needed? Is it sort of a oh, class of hypnotherapy? That's an interesting question. Some people can report that, I, I like to see every, uh, people every two weeks for a set amount of time. Yeah. And people will say often, oh, I felt really wonderful. I changed my viewpoint. I didn't feel so down about something. I felt more optimistic. Whatever it is, they have a, a sense of that. And then they have a sense that it's starting to go down a bit towards them. And this isn't deliberate, by the way. It's not, it's not how I plan it. But it's how we, we hold on to the good feelings. And, and then life starts to come back in a little bit. Then you yeah. get a bit of a top up and... It's cumulative. It, it builds the more you do it, which is what makes it so such a good therapy as well. So, my, what, what if it? What if it, Maureen? Just to play devil's advocate here, what well, if it goes wrong? What What can go wrong in a hypnotherapy session? Gosh, that's an interesting. Uh, I mean, like for the, acupuncture, it's like, it's, you know, for example, yeah. you can get a small bruise, or you know, oh, I see, or yeah. or whatever. I mean, you know, are there certain clients that are so anxious that it doesn't work for them, or can they freak out? I don't know. Have you had in your experience? Have you had anything like that? I remember for me, like one of the things I had was. Um, I always remember doing acupuncture years ago. I think you were with me at the time, and somebody had an anaphylactic shock. Oh yeah, just yes. so yeah. you know, just came I from nowhere. That. Yeah, and you know, it's, it, it, it freaked me absolutely. Freaked me. The only there's two things that can happen. One is that people are so relaxed they fall asleep. That's fine. Yeah, that's great. And they and they so relaxed. Snoring's not great for me, but you know, <laughs> I'm used to it. Um, yeah. I've only ever had one in 20 years of practice who literally, and you were here when it happened, she just ran out of the place because she had an issue, I remember, about acknowledging her pregnancy. Oh, right. And it got to the stage where I said, you really are going to have to get to grips, make a connection with this baby and stuff like that. And that, that was something that yeah. really, but that's nothing to do with hypnosis. That's to no, do it's with the, yeah, it's absolutely. the individual, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. So I can honestly say that in all the years I've been practicing that I have, I might have someone who's a little, who might say something like, mm, not really sure. Yeah. yeah they come the, back again, funny enough, yeah, but mm, yeah. not really sure. And then, you know, that, that's probably the worst thing really. Yeah. So is it a course, you know, I know that you like to see people for usually four sessions, don't you? Yeah. So yeah. what do you do in each of those sessions in terms of preparing for IVF? The first session is, again, case building, finding out what people need, what they want. I mean, when you're working in a fertility clinic, you, it's not like having a general practice. You, you do have a specific yeah. protocol that can work with it. I would do, uh, in the first session, I would relax people. I would give them ego strengthening, helping them to feel strong and secure and, and keeping them in a, a good in a good place for, for themselves, for keeping them safe. Then I take them into visualizations. So visualizing a control room where they can up their egg count, yeah. where they can thicken up the endometrium, very, very scientific, very cognitive. Then I take them off in a, because I like to use different, I, I flood by the way, I flood yeah. the subconscious so that, you know, one person may think, oh, I love that control room. That really works for me. That's fabulous. And I actually won't remember too much about the fertility garden that I've also thrown in. Someone else got love the garden. The garden was just, yeah. that was me. But actually, I like the subconscious to have choice. Yeah, so, okay. So it has both aspects. So there'll be two major visualizations, three major visualizations on the first session to take away. I then teach self-hypnosis, which is crucial because yeah. I... To, it's interesting though, two things. One, some people want to come to me and don't want to have any homework. They don't want to have to do anything. They want to be able to have it. 
have me do the work, which is what happens. It's done. It doesn't need to be retraced if people don't choose to. Now, for some people who are doing nutrition, they're doing this, they're doing that. Yeah, they're, they're doing, doing a lot. That, they don't need another set of tasks. Yeah. Yeah. Other people go, oh, what can I do? And they're writing yeah. down all the steps and I want to be able to do this at night time. I teach them self-hypnosis, which helps them to go to sleep. It helps them to actually access those places. Second session, it's more provocative, but we're looking at any gremlins in the work, any blockages, anything that might be getting in the way of yeah. natural pregnancy or could get in the way of IVF, anything that's there maybe from an emotional background that needs sorting, fixing, putting back healthy. So I'd be one of the I'd be one of those Insta people, Maureen. No homework, just just <laughs> knock me out. Yeah, and just let me do wake it. up tomorrow. Get on with yeah. It. yeah, yeah. That, well, that's, if, that's what some people want. Yeah, yeah. The good question here is all about resources. It's pounding in the resources, giving people as many different ways of managing their stress, their their griefs in some situations. And then I like to leave, leave that fourth session then for. Um, if it, we're doing embryo transfer, we have a post transfer, a two weeks, two weeks wait stage. How do I get through the two weeks? How am I going to manage it? What am I going to do in my mind? I want it to work. What am I, what am I, if I'm doing something negative? Yeah. What if, those sorts of questions are answered in that session. For other so, people, so, so many just ongoing. Are, yeah. Sorry, I'm just, I'm yeah. just interrupting because I haven't quite figured out when somebody puts a question through. I've got my finger on here. It's about to go. How is hypnotherapy different from normal talking therapy? How do we decide? Do, do we decide which one we need? I sort of briefly That's touched on question. that. That's a good question. It's yeah, a good question. It yeah. My view is, if I want, I like takeaways. I like therapy takeaways. So I want to be able to go home, have something to do in the night time, have somewhere to take my thoughts, have some way of managing negativity or disappointment or whatever it is. So I like that. That's the difference. I do half my session is a talking therapy. You may have noticed yeah. I like to talk. Yeah. Half of it is a talking therapy. The other half is practical strategies, exercises, self hypnosis to take away and practice. Yeah. And okay, for fantastic. me, the major issue is when you're going through something like IVF, IUI, or even trying to conceive naturally. If you don't have some form of framework for your mental health, how can you possibly expect to be able to go through something that stressful without scaffolding? And that's what I call my work, emotional yeah. scaffolding. Yeah. You've got yeah. something to hang on to when it's three o'clock in the morning, you've got up to go for a wee and you start going, oh my God, what if it doesn't work? What if it doesn't work? Gosh, how long is it going to go on? Am I getting on? Am I too old? Where are my legs? I, yeah, and I think as well, Maureen, it, it's getting through all of those hurdles. So mm. it's training your mind and preparing your mindset that yeah. when you go into a clinic and you, you know, you've got a busy week and it's running late or the yeah. scan is running late, instead of sitting there letting the adrenaline flood and the cortisol and yeah. feeling fractious, yeah. just techniques to use through that. Yeah. Yeah. managing those hurdles because you know to go through IVF to get as far as transfer and have transfer yes. is a huge achievement in its own, in its own honestly, and yeah. you know and it's it's interesting isn't it because I know that I've been questioned a lot by doctors in terms of women resting after they've had transfer now I, I would never make a woman feel bad about going back to work but I think that people don't appreciate how exhausted by the time you get to transfer and you wake up that morning yeah. and your husband has lost his keys and yeah. there's a traffic jam and you're in yes. that traffic and you are adrenaline, adrenaline yeah. out by the time you get there. Yeah. I just think at the end of it, just to lie back and do a meditation, breathe yeah. on the bed, you probably fall asleep. But yeah. you know, if you have to go back to work, you have to go back to work. And I totally yeah. understand that. Yeah. But there is so much to get through, isn't there? Oh God, yeah. And, and for me, again, the scaffolding idea is that if, you, if you've got something you can say when you walk out, the clinic, even on the way back to work, in your Uber, before you yeah. get back to your desk, a mantra, this, this could be the most amazing moment. I'm going to give every breath yeah. in my body to this moment. Something like that, going back in the Uber, it will calm you. Yeah. Breathe in through the nose and out through the nose. Yeah. See your beach, see your circle of protection, see your golden bandages, anything like that. 
is going to help you to yeah. manage that adrenaline. Somebody's just asked here, do you think hypnotherapy can help with natural fertility, not just help with the stress yes. of going through the whole process of IVF? I do, because, you know, again, part of the thing with trying naturally is managing a woman's expectations, especially if all of her friends are getting pregnant within yes. one or two months and she's not, because it takes about eight to 12 months. So, you know, if that is causing you to feel stressful, um, and, you know, everybody reacts differently to stress. Hypnotherapy is going to help calm you down, put you to that parasympathetic mode, yeah. which opens up the sort of blood flow and, yes. and, 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 and all of that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. But the other thing about natural pregnancy is the idea that you're not naturally stressed. I yeah. mean, there's nothing yeah. more stressful than waiting and hoping the period Uncertainty doesn't come. Uncertainty gives yeah. you the biggest stress going. That's absolutely. Right. Yeah. And also, there's the, sometimes the difference between natural and going through IVF is, to a certain degree, when you may be forced into the, so, uh, the situation of IVF, or it's the only choice you have, on some levels, you actually hand over some of the responsibility of that to the assisted process, to the doctors, to the nurses, to the hypnotherapists, the nutritionists. And in a way, that can be, for some women, a, re a sense of relief. Oh, it's not just down to me, my body. It's not, I'm not failing. And that's a word I hear a lot. Yeah, yeah. no, I agree. But I, I think as well, you know, for a lot of women coming through with natural fertility or IVF, mm. everybody enters trying for a baby with their own unique set of baggage, of which is they unique do. to them from the past, the present, yeah. or what might happen in the future. And so many women um, end up down a path of IVF with unexplained infertility, when a lot of it is no. mindset. So it's sorting yeah. out that baggage that we yeah. all have, all of us have. Yeah. How long before a frozen embryo transfer should we start hypnotherapy? Um, I'd, like to do, I'd like to do at least two sessions before a frozen embryo transfer. Yeah. Just to okay. get your resources in place. You want to get your hospitable womb is all about getting the mind and body working body. so it's open and accessible and ready for this fabulous embryo. Okay. Um, does hypnotherapy work for everybody? I think the figures are, you know, I think, I'm, I don't know the exact figures. I've been trained a long time now, but uh, it's very few people it doesn't work for. I, I think people who've got bipolar and, and uh, those sorts of disorders, you don't do hypnotherapy with them because they already have a an association with another dissociated self. But for the but most do, part. But, but does it, um, you know, like, like some women will say, I don't think it's going to work for me because I'm a control freak. Well, you're just looking at the biggest two control freaks <laughs> on the planet. So, I mean, work for us. <laughs> true okay <laughs> my sleep and anxiety are really hard during covid can yeah. hypnotherapy help absolutely and you absolutely. can do this by skype as well absolutely how, how do you do it when you do it by skype maureen do you get them to lie down when yeah i do i get them to lie down we have a situation like this instagram i can see their breathing i can see uh their dilation of their eyes so that i can watch for the physical signs of hypnosis and 100 percent it works i have to say that one of the horrible on some levels byproducts of covid is that we've had to fine tune our, uh, our practice in a way and make oh, yeah. sure that people are getting what they need via this medium. And, and uh, that is, I mean, I've always used it, but it's been, you know, the, the, the experience has been much, much more, um, there's so many more Skypes and there's so many more FaceTimes and, and WhatsApps and everything else that you actually hone it down. So one... Because I, I mean, I, I agree. I mean, like, I never thought I'd be doing no. this. And when I used to get to work and I'd look at my diary and I'd see all the Skype calls, I think, oh no, I hate doing Skype yeah. because yeah. I want to be with that person. Yes. I want to sort of really see what's going yeah. on. And you can't do it when the bloody camera keeps falling off. And, <laughs> you know, and, and you know, I, I'm so incompetent. Those poor receptionists every five minutes, they're probably relieved I'm not there calling them, please help me, please help me. Yeah, but I, I think that we are because familiarity and experience helps you to hone it down, doesn't it? And hone it yeah. down. So I think that that has been a, a good side effect if there can be such a thing of COVID. So yeah. 100%. I'm, and the other thing is I work globally. I mean, I'm America, Canada, Ireland. I've got, you know, a few people in Ireland that I see. So, you know, yes, it works. 
the beauty is it can work at lots of different times as well. Yes. You're not stuck yeah. in a clinic regime, if you like. You can actually be much more flexible. Although I do draw the line at 12 o'clock at midnight. <laughs> um, okay, I think I've covered a lot of my questions, Maureen. Oh, lovely. Um, anything else you would like to you would like to say i, I mean I hypno just... hypnotherapy can as well help with grief so women that have had oh, miscarriages yeah. or pregnancy losses yeah it's good for that as well isn't it well it, it because what i like to do in those sessions and we do see that unfortunately but i like to what i call uh do railway lines so yeah. on the one hand help them on this railway line to go through the grief get through it not not push it not try to make it go faster or anything, but help to manage it and support it. And on the other side, get them ready to go forward to a new process. Yeah. Do you do it on many it. men? Do you get many men? Um, in Darling, don't ask questions <laughs> like that. <laughs> in hypnosis. Uh, um, in hypnosis, I'm talking about, <laughs> Maureen. Um, yes, I do see quite a few men for, for very different things, actually. It's very, it's interesting that men, you know, have issues. Men will often have issues, issues when they suddenly discover that maybe part of the infertility is a sperm issue. Yes, yes. So and they, they put that and they find it hard to... They really find it hard to manage their own feelings around that. And, you know, it's, it's, it's something... That, but there are other issues as well that men... You know, sometimes men don't like to be told that they shouldn't be wearing lycra and riding bikes and things like yeah. that. So they, yeah. they struggle against that and they might have a little relationship issue over it because they don't think it's necessary because Dave down the road, he drank 14 pints of lard when he still got his wife pregnant. That yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. And again, I mean, like smoke, giving up smoking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how, how does it work for that? Uh, there was a very a, famous man that used to do a lot with Alan giving, Carr. Yeah, is Alan he still Carr. around? No, he's dead, darling. Oh, right. <laughs> but when he was alive, he was very good. Yeah. Yeah, no, it just works. It's just one of those things. And, and a lot of people have to... Smoking's, interestingly, socially much, much less acceptable now. So we don't see so many of that. But we do see the odd recreational drug that needs to be got yeah. rid of. So they're all addictions. Addictions and phobias. We get needle phobias, blood phobias all sorts of different phobias as well. I can see yeah. it especially, I find it very hard to imagine things. I'm not very visual. I don't daydream. Will hypnotherapy work for me? Absolutely, we have different modalities. Some, yeah. people, some people are more um, receptive to the sound of the voice. Mm -hmm. Some people are more receptive. Uh, and even if you- Images have, or- Yeah, yeah. But, you know, if, you, if kinesthetically you can do it. Yeah. We're not supposed to do that now, but um, you know, some people, they, they think they're not visual, but actually when you start to work with them, they have a different way of managing. They see colors, they see abstract yeah. forms. It doesn't, but I always say to people, we think we're not visual, but if I told you to go out um, off the street, turn left, put your arm out, what do you think might come towards you if it was black and a car? You can't help but see a taxi. Oh, I, I was thinking of a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, some people, <laughs> nothing you can do with them. I was just thinking, what, what would be black that would be coming towards me? <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right. Okay, so Maureen, what I'm about. saying is, generally speaking, we, we may not believe we're visual, but actually we have to visualise the world in order to live in it. You know, yeah. so, so it's a way of, we can work with that. But you don't have to stress over it. There are different ways of, of hypnotherapy working for you. Yeah, no, okay, fantastic. Maureen, that has been so good. Thank you so much. And if anybody wants to make an appointment with Maureen via Skype or the clinic, it's 0808-196-4060. And this will be recorded on Zeta West Clinic. Um, I hope you've all enjoyed the sessions and thank you. And thank you again, Maureen. Thank you, Zeta. Lovely okay, to see you. Bye, you. everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.